Welcome guys, my name is Matt and you're watching MTG Onage. Today we're going to be doing another rotation proof deck. This one, trying to take advantage of Scourge of the Skyclaves in Standard. Now, I am uh, testing a lot of these cards and this deck is by no means final. So the deck list you see here is what I'm going to be playing and I'll explain most of the thought process and, and the cards, but understand that some of these are just me trying things out. The most common uh, comment I get when someone likes my deck is deck list please. I guarantee you I would make this different if I were to uh, post my best version online or whatever. So uh, you know use this as inspiration. Here's the key cards. Scourge of the Skyclaves. Alright and you need some ways to lose life. One of the best ways is with Agadim's Awakening or Amiria's Call. This is obviously a two color black white deck. Orzov if you will. And we also have things like Malakir Rebirth, which can cause you to lose two life. And we have Callous Blood Mage, which yeah, only pings you for one, but it's something. And then we have, well, not a whole lot else. So it can be tricky. Uh, we'll feed the Swarm, feed the Swarms in here. There's only two of them, though. Sometimes this is a risky play. Uh, that, there is more. I, I said not a whole lot else, but there's else. Arrogant Poet. Seems actually quite good here. He's a great life loss source, and he can get your opponent down at the same time. Causing both of you to lose two life can be quite critical for the Scourge. Alright, so he's in here. A lot of creatures. And we have some reoccurring creatures like the Skyclave Shade. And we don't mind that he can't block because we want to lose some life anyway. So that's fine. So it's mostly, uh, these are kind of the key cards. Uh, I probably want another Feed the Swarm in here to be perfectly honest. But what do I take out? I don't know, maybe I'll take out a, a Shambling Ghast or something. Or an Unwilling Ingredient. Now I do have Unwilling Ingredient and he also can make you lose life. So that's kind of nice. And the rest of these are, I guess you could call them filler cards, but they do have their point. So let's talk about the point of some of these others. Uh, Ushers of the Fallen, just a single copy. It's just great early game pressure. And it's also, people love to remove this thing because it can be pretty scary if it doesn't get removed. So it's often just a removal eater. A Blood Chief's Thirst, great removal, running two of them. Nice cheap way to clear the board or clear the path for a minion. Eye Twitch, I love Eye Twitch. It's great for getting through and pinging a couple life points off your opponent initially. And also, of course, the sideboard is very nice. Academic probation we can get with the eye twitch to stop a blocker and get through. One environmental science is it does gain you life, which can be okay if you've got a lot less than your opponent. But typically we don't want to do that unless we really, really need the land or whatever. Expanded anatomy. Uh, just a way to buff one of your guys. So it seems pretty decent to get. Prophecy. I really like Prophecy. I usually grab this actually quite frequently because uh, scry 2 and draw is often just required. Annihilation, just got it in there. Uh, mascot ambition, exhibition, because why not? And confront the past. Uh, kind of. Yeah, those those might be able to be improved. If I thought about it, I'd probably change it. But we're going to leave it for now. Uh, so, Shambling Ghast. I think this is a really good zombie. Not only can he kill something, but he can create you a treasure, which can help him ramp you up some to get to a big spell. Like uh, either, what do we got? Agadim's or Miri's Call Cast. Or, don't forget about this guy's kicker. If you're going to kick him, and you have creatures to attack with, kick him before the swing, so your opponent loses even more life. But that's something you're going to need seven mana for, so uh, something that treasure can come in handy for. Village rights, I'm running two of these. I'm kind of iffy on this one, really. But uh, just a way to either sack an eye twitch or a shambling ghast as a trick and uh, get the cards as well. Uh, Luminarch Aspirant. I needed more two drops, and this seems like one of the best ones, because this this deck can sometimes struggle against other decks that bring out large creatures quickly. So the Aspirant can help a lot for that, and it's a great removal target. So uh, one of the things you want to do is just run your opponent out of removal so that the Skyclave is really hard to deal with. Check for traps. Uh, really amazing. I love that this makes you lose life too, so it actually goes in this pile. But basically you just get whatever card you want out of their hand. And uh, yeah, you're, you're just going to need it. The Adventure. I'm, I'm a little iffy on this Adventure. He's, he's a 1-1 one, one death touch for strike, basically. So he's going to get through. He's just a great way to make your opponent lose some life. Even if they got blockers, they're probably not going to block it. The Adventure into the dungeon is bonus. But if you get to do it, you probably want to go to the... Uh, I don't know how to switch it in this thing. Because if I scroll over, it goes to something else. Oh, right-click. You probably want to do the Tomb of Annihilation to make each player lose one life. Which is kind of perfect for this deck. So he really actually goes in here. In this pile, too. Uh, poison the Cup, just another strong card. Uh, the Scry can be critical. Uh, Silver Quill Command. Uh, this is the card I'm testing, so I'm not sure if it's the greatest, but the plus three, plus three in flying can be super good to get a huge Skyclave through to, to end the game. 
And you can also return pretty much any creature from your graveyard to the battlefield because almost everything's two or less. The only thing that's not is this callous blood mage. And the other option, let's see, target player draws a card, loses a life, or target opponent sacks a creature. All super great options, so we'll see how it goes. And now we have uh, the lands. I'll talk about them real quick. Cave of the Frost Dragon, of course. It's uh, pretty cool. Hive of the High Tyrant. One Plains, two Swamps, four Bright Climb Pathways, uh, one Snarl, a Shelter for the protection, and a Mauling. We're a little light on the lands, uh, to be perfectly honest here. So it's, uh, you know, there's nothing too expensive in the deck, really. You can, you can get away with just two, three, four mana all game. All right, so let's do some games in the new format and see how it goes. Play. Standard 22. 2022 ranked. Here we go. Opening hand is okay. We have ways to lose life. We have Aspirant. We have a Agra Mauling. It's not a fast hand, but it's a keepable hand. And we're playing against Red. He plays the first turn Boots of Speed. I think I'm going to play... Well, I'm debating here. I want to play the Arrogant Poet second, probably. I don't really need an untapped land right now. So I think the Agadim's Awakening is the way to go, or the Amirius Call. I feel like it's the Agadim's. And I don't need to lose life. I don't even have the Skyclaves on my radar. And he enchants it, draws a card. Interesting. We did get a Feed the Swarm. We're going to play this cave, of course, and... I think we're going to go with the uh, Arrogant Poet here. It feels like it's the play. It's something he's not likely to use removal on. What is this two? Plus one plus oh in haste. He already has that. And he plays Barbarian class. Pretty odd deck. I'm I'm sensing that he's going to... I can't remember the name of the card, but I know the deck somewhat. Okay, so we're going to play the Aspirant, buff the Poet, and uh, go for our attack. I'm not going to pay the two life right now. I fear he may blow up with some combo with rolling a bunch of dice and attacking with a wild mage or something. As much as I want to save the Hag Ramali, the thing is I can't even play it. So uh, we're going to just bring it in tapped. I need another source of black mana to even be able to cast it. I can only play this land. Uh, more haste. He's got plenty of haste, but no actual creatures. And of course, a top deck of swamp. What are the odds, right? All right, let's play the other Aspirant. I don't think he's going to have a board wipe. And we're going to put a bunch of counters all over this poet. And we'll just full swing here. Not going to pay the life. So I think the play here is to drop this swamp and hang on to the Mirius Call. I might as well play the Ghast. Why not? I kind of want to kill the Barbarian class, but I just don't feel like it's of that much use. He's not rolling any. He's not doing anything. He just did nothing. Oh, okay then. So we basically got to Goldfish that game. I haven't played much this month, so my ranking is, is way down from the reset, the monthly reset, which uh, could mean different things. All right, let's go on to the next one. That last match was not really even a match, but at least we got to kind of show how the deck plays and a little bit of the thought process and how to play the lands and that sort of stuff. Okay, start of the second match here. We have a couple lands. We have a couple plays. I'm not real keen on this hand. The Silver Quail command is pretty useless, but we do have removal. We have ways to lose life. We have ways to draw cards. We have ways to remove stuff. I think we'll just keep it and hope for some half-decent draws, but this is a little risky. I'm, I might mulligan this if I was playing super competitive. Okay, so we're going to start out by playing the Amirius Call Tapped, because we don't have any first turn plays. We don't have a good reason to lose life yet. This Hive of the Tyrant, High Tyrant, will still come in untapped on second turn. These lands are really good. I think these might be the best cards in the set uh, in the long run. Maybe. I think they are the only... Well, not the only. There are other creature lands that come in untapped. But are they the only ones that actually produce a color of mana that still come in untapped? They might be. They're very unique. It appears we don't have opponents today. Let's go on to game three, where maybe we can actually get a game. I still wonder why people hit the play button when they don't want to play. It very much confuses me. Alright, uh, game three. It's probably, well, if we actually get a game, it's technically, well, maybe not technically, it's basically game one. We've got Lance, uh, we're okay. This is not bad. We will keep it. Still no first turn plays. There's a lot of one drops. We just haven't seen. I'm going to bring this in 
tapped. As nice it was, as it would be to go ahead and lose a little bit of life, I don't want to reveal anything to my opponent. He's playing a Dawn's Guard Elite. Uh, this is a good card. It would be a great thing to remove. We're going to play Pathway. We're going to let him buff that up a little bit and think he's got a good thing going. So... Yeah, let's go ahead and play the Adventurer guy. Uh, I predict removal, because removal is very good for him. That means his uh, elite buffs and it gets through for an attack uh, if he's got an instant sorcery. So it's definitely a very good thing to remove if he's got removal. And I want to know very badly whether he has a removal or not. Mm, he must not. If he grabbed the fumes, it looks like he doesn't. All right, we grabbed a village rights. Let's go ahead and swing with this adventure. And as much as I want to go into the Annihilation, I also might not based on this situation. I might actually go into Fandelver here. Because I need a land, sort of. Eh, cave's good. That. We'll see what he does. He is going to take the damage. And we are going to play... Let's pretend to make a state mistake. Oops, should have played this before combat. Should have played my land tap, right? That's the trick. That is the entire trick. I'm acting like a general bat player, which is also my name. Oh, he can't even cast Necrotic Fumes. He doesn't have two black mana. Who's the bad player now? There's a plum. We'll let him resolve. See, I thought he was going to play another source of black mana. And then the, the forbidden thing. But this is understandable. Now I'm going to go ahead and... Oh boy, I've, I've biffed this actually. I should have just not tried to bluff anything. This is fine though. The 12 life is actually quite acceptable. We'll go ahead and buff our adventure and swing in here. And if I take a... Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a goblin. No, I'm going to take the treasure. I've got blockers. Because so I can go eye twitch. Cave. Then I could play a 5-5 Scourge and still have a mana open for the village rights. Yeah, let's do it. So I'm in a great life total. It means Scourge can potentially go up to an 8-8. So taking 5 last turn was actually quite good for me. If he doesn't draw another source of black mana, he's actually in a lot of trouble. Now, in case you didn't pick up on it, the whole reason for all these weird bluffs and saving one mana is the village rights. And in case he plays that Necrotic Fumes, I want a village rights. Whatever he targets. It looks like he's struggling to make all that happen. A Sedgemore Witch. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay, he just played the Swamp. Now he's playing Dina. So we can definitely see what he's going for here. He's going for some some massive triggers off of, off of his spells. And the scary thing about these decks is usually they go off in one turn, where suddenly... Everything gets very scary. We're going to go ahead and village rights. Our eye twitch here. And I think the thing for us to grab, well, I guess the academic probation. Milk was a bad choice. Okay. So let's think about this here. What is the most dangerous creature he has? Probably the dragon's guard. So let's go ahead and just blast it. And let's swing with the rest. And let's go ahead and use the Dark Pool. Scourge is absolutely massive now. It's possible he has something like Blood on the Snow, but I don't think so because he'd be playing Snowlands. So I think it is safe for us to just keep playing cards. We'll get this flyer out here. Uh, potential flyer. So at this point, it looks like he's in a real pickle, but uh, we're not going to call game until it's actually game. If he has to sack his Sedgemore to get rid of our Scourge, he's still in a bad situation. It's funny that normally her ward is really good, but actually against me, that's really good for me, because I can pay life to make my Scourge larger. But he killed the Triumphant Adventure. He's very worried about that. Interesting. So it looks like he's also in the situation where he still wants to play his Decrypt but still can't, because he doesn't want to sack his good creatures, and he just doesn't have enough black mana. It's like he just top-decked that elite. 
probably wish was he had it a little sooner. Attacking with the Sedgemore is an odd choice here. Actually, I don't hate the block, but I don't mind the damage. So that's okay. It's got a rather large graveyard. I feel like we just uh, swing out here. This guy. Now I'm going to Aspirant and Callus Blood Mage. Draw a card, lose a life. And here we go with this. He's going to block the Scourge, probably, is the thing here. So, do we give it flying? Uh, we will decline. We'll see if he wants to go to four life. If he goes to four life, the Scourge is even larger. There is only two Callous Blood Mages in the deck, and we have drawn them both. It is now his moment to use the Necrotic Fumes, but it's one of those cases of too little too late, because to cast it, he does have to sack a creature, and his two creatures are actually quite good for him, so he needs a, a real bomb here to turn this around. He's got a fail for mastery. Okay. And more removal. Okay. possible I may have biffed this game. But if we block there, and we block here, I think we're okay. I really don't want to go down to three life. I think we play the Callous Blood Mage. And we take the little token he got. Yeah, I think I just block one. I'm okay with this trade. Oh, Rebirth is quite good. Okay, we are going to swing with our Blood Mage. This particular game makes me realize how good Dragon's Guard Elite is, and Sedgemore Witch, and also Morality Spear, and Dina. This guy, I like this guy's deck. I'm learning things. He has double menace attacker potential on his next turn with his Hive of the High Tyrant, so that is somewhat worrisome. The Thirst is good, but I can't target the Witch. If he just swings with the Witch and the Eye Tyrant next turn, I lose. I've definitely made some mistakes this match. I couldn't pinpoint exactly what they are, but something in my sequence was wrong. I'd have to go back and rewatch. I probably shouldn't have tried to bluff and should have just played my strong plays as early as possible. He sees it. Okay, good game. Okay, game four here. We got a decent opening hand. Do we need our turn one play to lose life? I don't think we need to lose life. So let's go straight to the gas. And go to hello. I'm hoping he doesn't have a removal for this adventure. I don't think he will. Looks like he's having a bit of a slow start. A couple dryads. Let's just go right off with this. Ranger class. Werewolf. Leader guy. I uh, guess we take the ranger class. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna swing here. I like getting the four, four death touching guy. Stayed on tap for the snakeskin veil. Of course, I can see the snakeskin veil, so it's uh, not uh, gonna work. Let's go ahead and uh, send in here.
We will take the life loss. Tomb of Annihilation is very good for us. I should probably run four of these adventures. And maybe even consider some other adventure cards. He's gonna block. That is fine. We will go ahead and build rights. And we will uh, attempt to kill one of your dryads. Let's see if he uses the snakeskin on it. He does. That's okay. Scourge is very good here. It was a nice draw. We will play it. And it's very large 6 6 form. As long as we get to untap, we do have the shelter, which is very good. Okay, let's go ahead and send it. Now, losing a life here is epic because it makes the scourge even larger. Very good. These two cards, the adventurer and scourge, go very, very well together. Okay, looks like he's going to take eight, which is very much surprised. Oh, he's just conceding. He doesn't care. Or maybe he conceded when he realized he should have blocked, uh, chumped the 8-8. Eight, eight. Not sure. But that went very well. Alright, on to match 5, and, well, this hand is okay. There's a, a heavy amount of life loss for us, which kind of worries me, but uh, we will keep it. was a very risky play. I'm already down to 12, so I'd be very comfortable grabbing and gain some life and find a land card. any idea what his deck is. There's a Poet's Quill, though. Another card I considered for the deck, but the lifelink is not particularly good for us. It's usually bad if we're uh, making a Scourge deck, because if we gain life, he shrinks. And small creatures are not what we want in the Scourge department. That was a really awkward way of saying that. Okay, let's go. I almost want to go into the Mad Mage to gain a little life here, but I think I'm going to stick with the Annihilation. He is running one Snowland. Got Prophecy. This tells me he might be running things like Blood on Snow. So that gives me a couple options. I need to either kill him quickly before he gets to six mana. Or I don't know what the other option is. I just need to kill him quickly. Okay, he found one thing he liked. This might mean he has a board wipe next turn. So we do gotta go for the full swing here. Do I wanna give him flying? No thank you. Lose life unless you discard. He went with a no blocks option. Let's play the guest. I think we're gonna hang back with this last poet, just in case. Okay, his best play seems to be this here. Which does give him four life. I might as well kill his shambler. turn he's going to gain even more life. I guess I have to be okay with this. I could sack an eye twitch, and maybe I even should have. Oh, he sacked me. Very interesting. We'll play this here. So I don't think he has any board wipes. I'm sensing that it's a big no. But he's still going to gain five more life, and it's making him really hard to, to finish. As much as I want to hold back the adventurer for blocking with the death touch, also I really need that into the dungeon trigger.
Got any of them traps? Oh my goodness, he's got all kinds of traps. We'll get rid of the binding. We'll, set, we'll s keep back an eye twitch for blocking here. No thank you, no thank you. Traps, exiles. Here we go again. He does need this life. Maybe I shouldn't have held back the eye twitch, but I wanted to have a backup blocker just in case. Look at that life gain. My goodness, he's almost up to full again. I think we gotta go into the mad mage. I feel like going into the Mad Mage is usually a mistake, but not the whole lot of options. Usher's good. We will hang on to this one land. I don't have a good reason to play it. Now I do. Okay, that gets me back to creatures. Oh my. If I'm reading this correct, he can almost wipe my board with one counter. So I gotta be very aware of what I do here. Let's go attack with this, and this, and this, and I guess that'll be it. Yes, we scry. Hmm. Nah. I almost think I hold this swamp. Yeah. Decks that gain life are probably always going to be hard for me to defeat with this particular deck. Oh no. Oh no. And oh no. Oh, this is actually good. I can kill the creature, which is what I need. Maybe he doesn't see it, but the ghast will give the last piece, the last one point that I need. He does go back up to 16 yet again. The order of the triggers matters there. Let's get a treasure. Let's play the Agademes for two. No reason to play it for three, but two gets me back. Uh, do we want Usher, or do we want another Ghast? Ghast is really good, but we'll go Usher and Poet. Another Seral? Jeez. The life gain is just too much. I feel like we do a full swing here. I guess I could hang back with an eye twitch. I'm gonna pay the life with the poet this time. For reasons. Hmm. Guess we do want the village rights. We do want the aspirin, because why not? Yeah, let's just leave it. Is this non token? Never know. Permanent. Okay. It kills my biggest creature. Or, uh, it's gonna kill my usher. Now, how does this work? Oh, it doesn't... It targets me. When it resolves, it's gonna kill my usher. If I... Village Rice my usher... Sir Rolf's gonna get a counter. Oops. Okay, that uh, wasn't really intentional. I'm honestly not sure if it matters at this point. He just keeps gaining life, and I don't really have anything to remove that poet's quill. I have not drawn any removal, other than the one feed the swarm. This is a very, very hard match. And with all these counters, and the poet's quill, he's going to potentially gain a life. But I do have one last trick up my sleeve. A trick that might be just good enough to win me the game, potentially. We block here. 
we build rights it so he doesn't gain life. And now we can grab something that we could really use. What does this say? Uh, but it can still use its triggered abilities. We'll go with the Annihilation. Okay, even better. Skellies or two free cards? I already have cards to play, so I'm going to grab the Skellies. So I feel like those will get wasted. I did one. I'm going to try something. This is not a good decision, if I'm being honest. Okay. I was hoping it would work the way I thought it would. And that was basically exactly how it worked there. That order is fine. He loses this creature. Probably got nothing he can do. Unless he's got a hasty flyer. I think we pulled it off, guys. I was very scared for a minute there. He's going to look at his top card. He gives me the good game signal. I'll say good game as well. Okay. My goodness, the amount of life he gained. What was it? It was more than 40 that game. He gained a lot. Well, it was probably somewhere around 40. One misplay could have ruined it all for us there. Okay, well, that's it. I just want to say thank you for watching my video and uh, hanging out. Hope you enjoyed. I have some thoughts on what I might change going forward. But really, I kind of feel like I need a little more experience in the format before I start making too many changes. Because... I'm not entirely sure what other decks I'm going to be up against once I get to higher ranks. And you kind of need that info before you start tweaking your deck. You don't want to tweak your deck too much when you're winning a lot at lower ranks. You want to see how the format evolves. At least that's my take on the matter. But I feel like this deck is pretty strong, and definitely one you could climb with. So I hope you've enjoyed this rotation-proof deck that highlights Scourge of the Skyclaves and Triumphant Adventure, who goes surprisingly well together since you can just go right into the Tomb of Annihilation and make everyone lose life. Well, if you want to support, of course, leave a like. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe for more content. I open cards and stuff here, too. And also leave a comment, anything you want. Um, I love hearing and seeing good comments. And what else? I don't know. I don't have any sponsors, so I can't shout out those. But if I did, I would. All right. Peace out, guys. See you next time.